maybe it would be great, Maya, to begin with the beginning, if you can tell us a little bit about the idea of the car group and also the beginnings of this exhibition, Solaris Chronicles, with your idea to present the models of, uh, of Frank Gehry. Um, yes, uh, in Arles, we are building um, an institution which we call the institution for the 21st century. Um, the idea started seven to eight years ago. We have been uh, talking in several think tanks with uh, the core group. I want not to speak about the architecture, actually, but more about the program. What do you think? Yeah? Yeah. yeah. So the core group uh, of the Luma Foundation specifically to develop this project for AL, has very often really been mentioning Cedric Price and the Fun Palace during all the talks we had. Um, shall I formally introduce this, uh, the, the names, or do we all yeah, yeah. have this? Sure. No, okay. So, um, we are working uh, in the alphabetical order with Liam Gillick, who is also the um, director of... <laughs> of the Center for Curatorial Study of Bard College um, with uh, Liam Gillick, who has an opening today in uh, uh, Grenoble and who has been collaborating into this uh, pavilion here. He actually did this sign that you see here, which is really, uh, uh, has been up for only for the last week, I think. And uh, we are also working with Philippe Pareno, who has uh, been curating uh, the show of Solaris Chronicle together with uh, um, uh, Hans Ulrich. And then Beatrix Roof, part of the core group, a very, very important uh, pivotal, pivotal, we have pivotal <laughs> uh, element about uh, all the discussions we have. So. I'm going to hand over, of course, uh, Solaris Chronicles also came from a desire. We are working with the architect Frank Gehry. We are developing not only a project uh, of a new building, which is uh, the building which is supposed to um, be there like a signal. Also, because in Arles you need a, a, more, a bigger capacity of people at a wider audience than what can be found right now in a provincial town. But beside of this, we are developing a whole campus of old existing buildings. So our reflection is really on several levels, and I'm going to let the others talk uh, quite soon. Um, why I lost my... Um, hmm. So... Um, we actually discussed about different things happening at the same time on the same place. It's like the archipelago, and this is where the idea of movement comes from. Anyway, Solaris Chronicles is a group effort, a group show. It is speaking about uh, uh, Frank who gave, for the first time, who gave his seminal models. They are really huge models. Uh, of, very, of most of his important projects, and they've been put into motion, put into relation, put into a choreography which has been imagined by Philippe and uh, uh, by Tino Segal. Uh, we chose the, the, the models with him. There is a whole thing to say about this exhibition, but Hans Ulrich, I'm handing over for the, for the um, organization of the core group and what we are really trying to do in our in terms of the archipelago and in terms of the institution for the 21st century, which is so often referring to Cedric Price and the Fun Palace. Maya, thank you so much. And indeed, the Fun Palace was from the very beginning in the kind of... Uh, focus of the core group conversation. I thought indeed Beatrix could maybe tell us a little bit more before we go into depth then uh, the about this specific project, yeah. Uh, yeah. Solaris Chronicles, the kind of overall scheme out of which it grew and also, I mean, there was the Moon Beach project. There were many, many projects before. 
Uh, so it could be great, Beatrix, to hear more about that sort of overall scheme. Yeah, I think if we talk a little bit more about the, uh, the previous project, we, we find that it, it's all accumulating and, and moving continuously towards that. I remember very vividly when we started to talk about the project in R, that one, uh, one question always was, now, besides the in, in incredible uh, attempt to really do things collaboratively and, and, and to, 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 to find other ways of co-working also, I think one question was always towards the spaces and, and the definition of spaces and how spaces can not only have one identity but be fit for one thing but also open and, and dialoguing with many other things. And I think when you look at the model of the Fun Palace over, uh, stay, uh, sitting over there in the, uh, in the, in the pavilion, uh, you can see that there's many elements uh, in, implanted in there which have to do with uh, you know, defining space but also opening it up continuously to new, uh, uh, to new questions. Um, another thing which also comes here uh, is, is the question of how are being archives activated, how are, how are spaces activated for new meaning? Um, yeah, that, I think that was one of the, of the questions continuously going on. And in the, in the course of those, asking those questions, besides the actual architecture being developed really, um, many projects grew out of that. And obviously there have been uh, previous uh, exhibitions, but with Solaris Chronicles, the idea of the exhibition as a, as a program, which was already there from the, in the Moon Beach project, sort of was pushed further. And maybe, Philip, you could tell us a little bit more about uh, what happened with uh, the models, because, I mean, there were so many layers in the conversation. The idea was initially, I think, with you and, and Liam, when we discussed to actually, after visiting Gary Studios, to kind of put the models in movement, but there was also this idea of a sun. Uh, maybe it's, it's great to hear a little bit more about the genesis of this, of this show. Um, it's, uh, it's the journey started some time ago when Maya, I think last year, when Maya uh, uh, wanted to present in the city of Arles uh, the architecture of Frank Gehry to the, to the citizens, and I thought it was a good idea. And, uh, so we try to think about a way to display or to present the architecture of Frank Gehry not in a classical way, but to try to invent something, as I always concerned by exhibitions and exhibition models, I thought it would be a good idea to invent uh, a new model. So uh, with Liam, we started first the conversation and came the idea to, have, uh, to introduce some dynamic. So the first display was to have on a ramp a light moving around uh, the exhibition space and projecting shadows. And then, uh, then we started to talk to Tino Segal about adding another layer, and, and uh, Tino decided to go and to put all the models on wheels and to make them dance. And, uh, and then he asked also to have um, the marquees, which are a series of objects I've been doing since the last 10 years, to hang them above the above the models, so there will be basically view layers, you know, the marquees will like perform their own like, you know, lighting displays, and the models will dance, and then the light will swing and turn around. And uh, so it being uh, a conversation mainly with friends and trying to develop a new grammar. And, uh, and Assad Raza came also uh, into uh, the game, so to speak, and uh, and we develop all together, cooked all together, this uh, new type of, I don't know you call it, of uh, exhibition, yeah. And Asa, maybe uh, you can tell us more about this choreography which unfolded, because obviously it's a choreography which is activated every day. It's not a performance, it's, it's an exhibition. Um, and uh, it, there are very many different moments, like here in the Swiss Pavilion, we have many different moments with Philips blinds and, you know, the trolley is coming out, and then all of a sudden, the choreography, you know, creating a projection. Um, in Arles, in a similar way, there are these moments when the models don't move, there are the moments when the models move, uh, there are the moments when the sun, all of a sudden, you know, the projections of shadow, it becomes a shadow place. Um, can you tell us a bit more about the, the process of the choreography and how it ends up actually then being almost like an instrument which can be played every day? 
Yeah, I mean, I think what was fun for, for me at least was to, to, to have these different, these different orders of things to play, to play with. Um, so there was like Tino's choreography of the models and there was Philippe's Marquis, which also were playing a kind of music, you know, different kinds of music. And there was also um, the models themselves still and then there was the sunlight of Philippe and Liam. And so um, as, we, as we started to work on it, we also realized that we have these people who are going to push the models and make this kind of uh, make them dance, but they could also operate all the other elements. And so instead of it being like a kind of pre-programmed sequence that just keeps looping, even if it's a very long loop and you don't realize it's a loop, there's still something different about a loop. Um, what, we, what we did, which is, which, is, which is less like that, is we, we created like different, different possibilities and then those people can kind of dial them up when they want to. And so that, in that sense, I think it became more, I guess we could, be, we could say it became more dynamic and responsive to the visitor what happened there and I think we tried to do that here also that like there's no sequence that, that forces the people here to bring a cart or do different moments in the exhibition here it can happen somehow in some kind of organic relation to the visitors and that's somehow important to me because I think like in some way when you have this moving exhibition there's no static object that represents like the center the center is this kind of moving what I think of as like kind of a moving spirit that goes and inhabits different aspects of the exhibition. So in, in all, it's like inhabiting sometimes the marquees, sometimes the models and the people pushing the model, and sometimes um, there's just this sunlight. And, and here it would be again like these trolleys and the, and the chairs and the, and the archive and, and all of those things. So for me that's the, the, the link between the two, but also what, what's special is to try to make something that can actually change according to what's happening rather than be according to a kind of master program. And maybe a last question um, for the panel is about, you know, because we can say these exhibitions in a very organic way are experiments which lead to the next experiment. And Solaris Chronicles very much grew out of the experiment in the arena in Al, where a time-based exhibition happened with uh, the moon and the beach, and there was a kind of a intervention of many artists in the central display features. So I was wondering if maybe one or two of you could tell us a little bit about that experiment. Just complete the picture. To talk about the moon, uh, to the moon at the beach. That was the first uh, show that we uh, did, that was two, three, two years ago. That was a show I curated with uh, Liam Gillick, and uh, it took place in the, in the arena in Arles, the antique arena of Arles, and, um, where you have a lot of events happening. And there with, uh, with uh, Liam Gillick, we invited uh, 10, 15 artists, I don't remember, to. Uh, to do something during three days. So during three days, there was uh, people were witnessing art being made and, uh, and being unmade. And uh, it was quite a magical moment. So I think since then, and Solaris to here, that's I think what we're trying to do now, to, uh, to, show, a sort of exper to show an experimental uh, program for uh, an, ex an, experiment, an experimental institution up to come. So while we wait for the architect to build the building, we are actually working and developing ideas and, uh, and also working, working together is also a thing for me. Also I learn a lot from Assad, I learn a lot from Tino and also what I, what I was defined before as a, as a grammar, I think it's also friendship. So we learn from each other and we want not to uh, push it further and I think when the building will be uh, Built, I think we'll be ready. Yeah. No? Maybe any final comments, Beatrix or Maya? No, I, I think that that's a very crucial point. Uh, what you mentioned there, I think um, when when one went to the arena, for example, it always was this cohabitation of activities happening. But also, it was always about how people act together and how they work together. And I think that is true also for the. The, the Solaris Chronicle now that you not only experience objects but you experience people working together. Thank you very, very much. Uh, just, <laughs> I'm sorry, I didn't hear you. And uh, above all, um, even when the buildings are finished, we want to stay in movement. There could not be a better conclusion. Uh, thank you so much, Maya. Thank you so much, Philip. Thank you so much, Beatrix. Thank you so much, Asa. Thanks a lot.